Hey guys, Melissa here from designsbylittlebee.com and today I want to do a bit of an in-depth tutorial on using Embrilliance Essential software to customize some of your purchased embroidery designs. It might be a little bit long, so go grab a soda or some water or a snack and come on back and join me and let's learn about how to use our software. So obviously these are probably things that you can do using any software. And there are other options out there. I use it in Brilliance Essentials for my customization purposes. By customization, we mean you purchase a design and you change it in some way to better suit your needs, like taking off a piece of the design that you didn't like or adding a name or merging a monogram together in the way that you like resizing, that kind of thing. We're not talking about creating an embroidery design from scratch. That is called digitizing. Today we're just talking about you bought a design and you want to change it just a little for your own personal taste or use. So as a digitizer, when I release a design, I'll tell you, honestly, I think of everything people could complain about when they buy it. When I see it on my screen, I often think, oh no, what if somebody wants this element bigger or smaller or they're not happy with the way that something stitches out or they want to change it slightly etc etc and the fact of the matter is if you have embroidery software you can make a lot of little changes to a design yourself you can do what I call sometimes I call it hacking chopping just different hacks and things you can do to your purchase designs to make them fit your needs better for example here is on the screen now you see my lip balm key fob eyelet. This is the simple slice lip balm key fob. And what you do is you stitch it all out and then you see these two lines right here. You slice between them and bam, you've got a simple lip balm holder. These would be great for little stocking stuffers, gifts, even things for craft fairs because they stitch out so fast. It's three steps and you slice it and you're done. And before I released this design, I thought, oh no, what if somebody sees this and they want the rectangle to be higher? What if they want it lower? What if they need it farther apart? I mean, the questions that I have as a perfectionist are endless. Are people going to like this? Are they going to want to use it? So what I do is I release a design in the way that I would stitch it out. This is has been tested several times by me and by other people. And this is my personal preference. It does not mean that it is going to be your personal preference. And that is where software comes in handy. It's hard to convince people sometimes that embroidery software isn't just a money grab. Like, oh, these greedy embroidery software companies just want your money. No, this embroidery software allows you to work smarter, not harder. And it also allows you to customize embroidery designs to your personal taste or what will fit your project best. And you don't have to invest in a hundred different embroidery designs that are more or less the same thing that you could have accomplished using embroidery software. That's a little trick of the trade. So here I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, let's say you bought this lip balm design from me and you said, well, I like it a lot, but I want that rectangle taller um, because I have a hard time cutting in between these two lines with my craft knife. So what you're going to do is expand your, this is how you edit one element of the design. Expand all the elements of the design. You'll see here that is your tag, uh, placement. There's your little rectangle and there's your final stitch. So what you're going to do is select the element that you want to change. And look, now it is separated from, it's a standalone and it'll move all over the place. Check that out. So I'm going to take it back. So now let's select it again. Let's say you want it taller because maybe you have some dexterity issues or you're just not that trustworthy with the sharp knife. I totally uh, identify with that. So you can grab this. See all the black boxes around? Those are just like any other program that you use. You grab one and you can edit the element like that. So here I'm going to make it just a little bit taller. Bang. Done. It feels kind of weird to take up that much time to explain that. So I'm going to hit undo. Let's say you're not happy with the way the lip balm sits right up here. And let's say you wanted the rectangle for your slice to be higher. So same thing. Grab it. 
Now you can grab it like this and you can move it up. That can get a little tricky because you still want to leave it exactly in between those two sides. So what I prefer to do in this case is to use my arrows. That looks good. And now when you save this design in your folder, it's yours. You can use it again and again just like that. And you may love a certain digitizer's designs, but they may release something that you're like, mm, I'd like to edit it a little bit for my own personal taste. And this is a great way to get a quality design from someone you trust, but still edit it to make it a little better for your taste. So next I'm gonna show you how to, we're going to take the snap tab off of this snap design, and we're going to add a different top. So I'll show you what I mean by that. First, what I call chopping. You grab your design in your software and you'll notice that I'm using all PES designs. I'm not using my working file from digitizing. That's kind of cheating to show you how to edit them in my own working file. So I'm using a PES design. This is just as if I bought it from someone and I was using it in my software just like you do. The first thing about chopping, if you want to edit a design and you want to take a little piece off of it, the first thing to remember is that you're going to want to use your stitch simulator. So click on that. See, it's up here. It looks like a needle pulling thread. Run your stitch simulator through your design. And what I want to do right now is I want to chop off that snap tab. See it? I want to make it go away. So go forward in your stitch simulator, the first thing you want to do, and you want to go up to the point where the design for the little coffee cup separates from the snap top, okay? So how do you do this? Well, if you just got lucky and landed on it, good for you. If you need to advance or go forward stitch by stitch, you use these little blue arrows right here. So I'm going to go back two stitches. You hit stop when you're right between the two elements and choose literally any other color other than what it is now. Now it is devil red. I'm going to choose clay, click OK, and if you go over to your, your objects screen right here, you will see that you've got the coffee cup, and now the tab is separate. So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to delete that tab. But wait, we've got another tab to get rid of. Do it in the exact same way. Grab your advanced rectangle for your stitch simulator, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now I'm in the final. Da, 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 da. So I'm going to use my back button, and I'm going to hit stop, select any other color, go over to your objects pane. There's your cup. There's your tab. Delete the tab. And I'm not really going to need those placement circles for my snaps either for this particular project. So I'm going to delete those two. Okay. Now we did it. We deleted the snap tab top. And that is a process that I call chopping. I don't know why. I just think it sounds cool. So now I'm going to go over to the top that I want to put on this snap tab. This is a flower shaped top. It originally came off of my flower hand sanitizer design. I just slapped a little flower on there to make it cute, to make it something a little different. And I now sell these as a set. I sell, um, the set is a flower, a heart, a star, and a circle, I think are the, are the four that are included. So I'm going to go over here. Now there are many options to get this snap tab top over to your snap over to your keychain that you're trying to add this top to. I am not the embroidery police. I'm not the embrilliance police. And if you find a different way to do it, great. You can merge it in using this folder up here. You can bring it in from a folder you have open on your desktop and simply drag it over to the window. For this particular video, I'm going to select it, hit control C, go over to my project I was working on, hit control V, and bam, there it is. Gonna need to scroll out just a little bit because it's bigger. Now, grab that element and go like this. Whee! Now it's just a matter of placing it 
where you want it on the design. So I think that is going to be perfect right there. I'm going to hit center. I love to have my things centered on the screen. I don't know why. Now, if you were to save this design to your computer, it would stitch out in exactly the order that it shows. Open up your objects. It would stitch out coffee cup, foam, shamrock, straw, detail lines, and then the finishing stitch. Then it would go back in the order to the snap tab top. That's probably not the way you want to do it. You want all of your elements to be right there with each other, like you want the placement all together and you want the final stitch all together. The way that I do it, I'm going to grab this placement for the top and I'm going to drag it up to where I want it, right here. Okay? Then, I'm going to do the same thing with my placement circles. They go right before the finishing stitch, so I'm going to drag them right here. Now, here is how I get the final element out of that design, that snap tab top flower. I'm going to select just that element. I'm going to hit copy, delete, paste. And do you see how it became part of that design? I really like to do it that way because now all of my elements of this design are in the same menu. So did you see what I did there? Let me show you again. I, I'm using a PC, so I do control, I use control C, X, V all the time for control copy, cut, and paste. But you can also do it by right clicking. Copy, then I delete it, then I select nothing, I'm nothing right now, and then I select paste. And did you see? Now they're all in the same. This makes it so much easier to work with. So now if we look at our key fob, you can run your stitch simulator and it will show you how it's going to stitch out. Look at that. Now the reason that the outline stitched all in the same, did you see how it went straight from here to here? That was coincidence because I started these snap tab tops on the right side. I did that because many of my designs end on the right side, so I wanted it to match up with people who are using my design. It might not always match up with the item that you've merged it onto. That's because they weren't meant to go together, so you might have a start and a stop, and that's okay. Just line up the new addition as well as you can. Now, did you know that if these colors on the right in your properties box are the same, your machine will read these as the same step. So don't worry that this cup looks different, is in a different object than the top. Because once you save this, if you open it again, these will be the same step because they're the same color. Your software and your machine are really smart. Let's say that I changed my mind and I want an eyelet top on top of this. I want to make a little charm or just a teeny tiny key fob. No problem. Here's what I'm going to do now. Since these are separate in the window I'm looking at, I'm going to go select, hit control, and you can select more than one thing at once. So I'm going to select my circle placements and I'm going to select my other. Oops, I selected the wrong thing. No big deal. Just click it again while you're holding control. And I'm going to select that and I'm going to hit delete. Now I'm back to my simple little cup. So let's say that I want to add an eyelet instead. This is my eyelet top. Yes, I sell it separately at designsbylittlebee.com. So I'm going to do exactly what I did earlier. I'm going to select it, hit copy, bring it over here, hit paste, and guess what? We're going to do exactly what we did for the snap top version. First, I'm going to grab the red and bring it up. Then I'm going to select the purple. My personal way of doing it is to 
copy, delete, paste, or I could have hit paste right there, and that's it. Wow, that it actually takes longer to say than it does to do. So here you have your eyelet version. And if you'll notice in this one, the eyelet starts on the left. So this will stop there, and then it'll go over to the eyelet. And that's just something you have to deal with, unless you have your own digitizing software and you can make your own little tops and, and tricks like that. And finally, a little something we discussed in the last in Brilliance Essentials video I did. Let's say that you want to remove an element from a design. That is super easy. Let's say you want to delete, let's say you don't like these little detailed lines. You go to select, you select the object, and you hit delete. Wow, that was pretty crazy, huh? But let's say that there's an element you want to get rid of, but it's connected to another element. For example, in this particular design, the shamrock is actually connected to the little drizzle topping on the top of the coffee. And let's say you want to get rid of the shamrock, but you want to keep the drizzle. Guess what? You go right back to that stitch simulator. You go through the design, advance the design until you get to right there. Right at, you want to get to the end of the last design right before you go to the next, or not design, I'm sorry, I should be saying object. You want to go right between the two objects. So right here I'm going to go back up one stitch, bam, there it is. Now we're at the end of our shamrock. You want to hit stop. Guess what you do? Select any other color. Click OK. And if you look over at your objects pane, you can see that the shamrock is there and the drizzle is there. So just delete the shamrock. Did you see how easy that was? So I just wanted to make this video to show you how cool it is to hack and edit and chop and merge and do lots of different things to customize the embroidery designs that you've purchased. Enjoy customizing your embroidery designs from designsbylittlebee.com. I will chat with you in the group and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye!